Right after my job interview for an elementary K-5 STEM teacher and coaching position, I started to cry. I called up my teacher, honey, and told him that I did a horrible job and that there is no way they were going to hire me for this position. I had taken a half day from my classroom teaching position of six years, and I had a little bit of time left, so I went and got a pedicure to calm myself down before I had to teach the rest of the day. The next day, I got a phone call from the interview committee, and not only had I gotten the position for the K-5 STEM teaching position and coach, that I also would be getting a brand new remodeled classroom and a handful of supplies. I was so excited for this opportunity. However, I had no idea where to start with this brand new position, brand new to me school district, and brand new room. Based on my experiences, here are the things that I wish someone had told me back then and that I had learned definitely the hard way. Let's dive in and set up your STEM space with success. Today, we're going to be talking about three major things that you should do in your STEM space, especially if you teach multiple grade levels. And these are things that will help you set a foundation so you can be successful all year long. The first is to create a space that works for all grade levels. Learn the flow of your classroom and definitely see what works and what doesn't. You are definitely going to make some changes along the way based on how things work in your classroom, based on where the furniture is set. So this will take some time to find a system that works best for you. Of course, you want to think about if you have multiple classes coming to see you throughout the day, have a designated space for classes to line up before entering your classroom. This is extremely helpful and important because if you, again, see multiple classes, you will have an overlap of classes at times. Sometimes the class might be early. Sometimes you might be a little bit late. Uh, sometimes the other teacher might be late picking them up. So you definitely want to have that designated space for classes to wait until they are ready to enter the room. Once they are ready to enter the room, think about where they are going to go when they enter your classroom. A lot of teachers like to have students sitting at their tables, but I actually don't recommend doing this. I have students enter my classroom K through five in our group meeting area. And in this area, there is our TV, our whiteboard, any other supplies and materials that students will need to be successful for the lesson, directions, all of that is in one designated location. And students come into the room and sit in the big open space. You could definitely, based on your classroom, have a large carpet, have sit spots, have numbers for kids to sit. But this is extremely helpful to get all the kids together and ready and excited for the lesson. If you have them spread out along the room at the tables, you might have supplies that they're distracted by. They might be very far away. They might be be more, more focused on who they're sitting next to. So having them in that group meeting area can really be impactful for every single lesson that you teach throughout the year. Also, when you're thinking about the flow of your classroom, think about where the materials are going to be stored and have those accessible at kid height. The more you can make kids' materials at their level and ways that they can access them on their own, this will definitely give them that independence and grabbing what they need to be successful. Also, when you have your materials stored in the classroom, I highly recommend labeling your materials with words and pictures. This is helpful for all learners and even you as a teacher so you know where the supplies go when you find them on the floor. When you have the flow of the classroom, have a designated location for students to line up at the end of class. This should be a place where it's easy for them to get to. There aren't extra supplies that are around to distract them, other students' projects, and that the other teacher who is ready to pick them up for the day can grab them. Really thinking about this flow that will work all year long for all grade levels, this will help set up the systems and routines, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that can be built on year after year. The second thing to focus on when setting up your classroom is to build a community that 
promotes growth mindset. This is a skill that you will be working on with your students the entire school year and year after year. A big mess conception that I had coming into this STEM space is that all kids are excited to be creative and build things. Wouldn't you want to do that as a kid? Well, I found out quickly enough that this isn't always the case and that a lot of students were actually scared of trying new things. They wanted to know exactly what the project is going to look like, that they were more shy about showing their creativity. Promoting growth mindset in your classroom is definitely going to take time and something to continue to build throughout the years. I don't necessarily teach a specific growth mindset lesson. I know a lot of classroom teachers like to do that, but in the STEM space, your time definitely is limited, and I like to promote growth mindset as it comes up in the classroom. Sometimes I'll even write a positive note for students to take home to share with their class and to share with their families. Some of the growth mindset sayings that I will say over and over again, they're hanging up in my classroom, is we can do hard things. Things. Often I will hear kids say, this is too hard. I This is impossible. I can't do it. Then I go back and give them a high five like, yep, it is hard. We can do hard things. That is why you're here and I am definitely doing my job. You are doing a great job of what you're working on. I also really like to promote we are creators with technology, not just consumers. And we practice to make us better, not perfect, because perfect doesn't exist. These eight growth mindset sayings you can actually find in my TPT shop, and I'll also link it in the show notes. The third thing that you'll want to do when setting up your classroom is to create systems and routines that can be used all year long for all your grade levels and lesson types. Now, specific materials and lessons will have their own systems. This is more for your general flow of the classroom. So again, a lot of these are going to overlap with learning the classroom flow. These are those systems and routines that you're definitely going to need to have that classroom management. Now, if you were a classroom teacher before like I was, all of your back to school prep when it comes to classroom management still applies. You're just teaching it in chunks and what is manageable for multiple grade levels. You definitely don't want to skip this step. It will take time to learn your classroom, but the systems and routines will help you create a climate and culture that students can thrive in year after year. Here are some things to think about the routines in your classroom. These aren't a full list of things, but they're definitely, again, a lot of those same systems and routines that mirror what you would do in the regular classroom. About how students are going to enter the room, where and how they're going to gather supplies, how are they going to use classroom furniture. Some classrooms might even have flexible seating. Definitely model how to use that furniture and where are students going to sit. Also, what are the routines for how students need to ask for help when they need projects? Also think about what are some signals to get the class attention? This you want to probably keep consistent for all of your classes and have a few tricks that you add in throughout the year because it does get loud pretty quick. It is controlled chaos, but there are times you definitely need to get the class's attention when you're in the middle of a project. We talked about things that are going to help you be successful and set up that foundation throughout the year. So here's a recap of those three major things to plan and think about before diving into the that content. Create a space that works for all grade levels, build a community that promotes growth mindset, and create systems and routines that can be used all year long for all grade levels and lesson types.